Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of One Life with your host, it's me, Wintertooth100, and today we're starting off this episode right in front of the mob spawning AFK farm that we started in the last episode. Like I said, I was going to do some work off camera, which I have, as you can see, and right now we have the Schematica mod loaded up, uh, because this thing's certainly a lot easier to build when you have the Schematica mod loaded up. <laughs> the purple blocks you're seeing are... Uh, basically, it's the schematic saying, hey, that's supposed to be an air block, and that's why it's purple. Purple's to let you know that's supposed to be air. And the blue blocks that you can see are supposed to be uh, where blocks have yet to be placed. And if we go take a look at them, let me put my helmet on because the mob farm is on. Well, it's, it's working, but it's not functioning at the moment. Uh, but the blue blocks are blocks that are yet to be placed. So if we take this repeater and we place it, oh, well, that was a bad example, place it, you'll see that it becomes just like a normal block, nothing's wrong. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. I said we were going to uh, work on some of the wiring with you guys. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to do some of the wiring. It's very basic. Essentially, we got those 50 dispensers that we made and they're all plugged in and they each have a bucket of water in them and this thing on a timer which I've already built over there it's not connected to the redstone yet I have it disconnected but on a timer it will turn uh, there's five levels it'll turn levels one three and five on and keep two and four off and then once the the, the clock goes off uh, it'll turn off 1, 3, 5, and turn on 2 and 4, which results in having, uh, let's get some of these crafted up. Uh, that results in, there's always something running, and always a space for mobs to spawn in. Uh, and I guess it's not technically necessary, but it does bring the efficiency of the farm way, way up. Uh, and we do want to have a pretty efficient farm up here, considering we are... I missed a torch. Huh. Considering the higher you go up with, with mob, with mob farms, the the less they're going to spawn. That was my last torch. I guess that one's unnecessary. I can take that. If I can reach it. Uh, I won't mess with it. I got some blocks over there. So, just like that, the whole first layer is done. We have to do it for five layers. Uh, it's not that tedious. I've already done the other side. Uh, it's it's quite easy, especially with the schematic mod. At this point in the build, uh, without the schematic mod, the hardest part is knowing how to set up your redstone torches so we don't get accidental water flow before we are ready for it. Uh, that is one thing that can throw off the mob farm is oh, you need to be placed uh, having the water go at the wrong time that can happen as you load and unload the chunks here uh, sometimes over time you'll notice that uh, if you ever go inside of there which is dangerous but you'll notice that like floors one and two are going at the same time and you know three four five are all synced to each other instead of odds being synced with each other which is the way you want it so you might be noticing that we have red blocks this red block essentially is saying uh, we have red and orange red is saying that well, hold on why do we have red and orange here what's going on here okay well you see we we have this that's probably why well then why aren't you you should be the same same thing. Huh. Interesting. I don't know why they're both doing it, because they both have the same problem. But essentially, it's supposed to be representing that, hey, the right... Orange is saying, you have the correct block here, but it's in the wrong state. Which is why I'm confused with the red. Red's supposed to be, this is just the wrong block. But this is the right block, it's just in the wrong state. It should be orange like that. And I'm not sure why that's acting up like that. But, ah. Oh. If you accidentally screw up like that, all you have to do is activate it again. 
and it'll pick up the water. But I don't want to have accidental mob spawns, so I'm just going to come through, place in some of these redstone torches, just to have some extra light here. Once we're at the end, it's all, all the redstone's placed. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to put in the last redstone dust as we go along. So that should activate the first line. Then we'll go to the second level. And we're going to do the same thing for each level. I'm going to put this down. So this should stay off. Perfect. It stayed off. So if nothing else, this is a good opportunity to just double check your work. Make sure that everything's, you know, synced up right. So this whole line should turn on. Awesome. Awesome. The next floor should stay off when we place our dust down. Ooh. Scary. Thought I was going to fall there. So this should stay off. And then finally, the last floor should turn on. Should. And once we place this, assuming this turns on correctly, which I'm pretty sure it will. Perfect. Now we can go place the final block in this whole system. And this will be up and running. We'll have to remove all of our scaffolding blocks, but that shouldn't be too difficult. All right, so now we place the final block right there. And once this goes, it's not the easiest to hear, but you should have heard. Hear all those pressure plates? Those are mobs being forced out of the system. Let's see if we can see it. There they go. So you'll notice that we have red. Those glass blocks are not wrong. They're just the wrong color. Those are supposed to be glass blocks. Uh, we have a timer down there with lava. Sometimes spiders and uh, armored mobs will survive the fall. That lava is just there on a timer to clean them up. Uh, you do lose some item gainage by doing that, but it's really not a big deal. So I'm going to clean this up and I'll see you down on the platform. All right, so there should be one final step left with this process. And that would be, let me get around to it. These hoppers right here, we need to uh, put in a filter, if you will. Let's use, let's use this as an example. So you saw one from 42 down to 41. So essentially we've just created a filter here. So this basically says uh, only stone bricks and redstone can get through. However, there are no way that stone bricks should be able to pass through this system. So only redstone can come through and go into these chests uh, associated with this. But we need to create a filter. So in order to make a filter, we need to have the materials, enough materials for each one that we want to have a filter. We want them all to have filters. So I need to AFK for a little bit so we can acquire enough materials. And this is just from standing up here, by the way. <laughs> so this has not been going for very long and it's already working. So as you can see, we got five main things and we have four main sections. So we can either choose one of these things that we never ever want to see, which isn't a terrible idea, Rotten flesh isn't super important. When we get to 113, I have a custom crafting recipe that does require rotten flesh, so I don't want to mess with that. Um, so instead, we're going to divide this up. I think we're going to go four of one thing, four of the next thing, and then these back two will be another thing, one more thing, and then the final thing. So basically, we just need four stacks of everything before we can apply our filters to it. And once our filters are in, then we can AFK for as long as we want. No big deal. All right, guys, I'm going to go AFK for, let's say, one hour, and I'll see you after that hour. All right, we've been standing up here for exactly one hour. Let's head down and see how much mob drops we've acquired in that hour. 
Okay, so we've we've crushed it. We're into to the second chest already. So you can imagine when you AFK overnight, uh, this thing really racks up the stuff. It usually takes one or two nights. That's like eight hour sessions for me of AFK to really start filling up these chests. So you can actually, if you don't use this very often, like an hour here or there, this thing is super efficient for you. Uh, get the job done and it won't overflow the storage. Uh, however, if you decide to dedicate one or two nights of full AFKing here, you almost don't need to use this mob farm anymore. You can just kind of come here, grab whatever, and be done with it. You, I mean, it's a, it's a big project, you put a lot of time and effort into it, and you can get to the point where you don't need to actually use it anymore fairly quickly. Uh, it does have the upside though, if you are in need of a specific material, say we're building something really huge and grand and requires bone, bone blocks, right? We can change the filters to all these to just be bones and then we can spend our downtime AFKing here and all of these chests will be dedicated to bones and then we'd be set for a project, which is a big reason why I wanted to set this up. I want to make sure we have access to plenty of bones, uh, plenty of gunpowder for we, when we get our wings, we can make our as many rockets as we need. Uh, right now, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and grab all of a full stack of arrows for our bow, which is another huge upside to this. And additionally, I have ideas for the Resilient 2 server when that comes out uh, that require a ridiculous amount of string. So just another huge upside to this farm. Also, if you are playing on a multiplayer server, look how easily we can now just give away string so other players can get their 50 dispensers so they can build this too. Basically, once one player's up and going, they're all set. Alright, we're reaching the end of the episode. It's running pretty long. I know it was a talky episode. Uh, a lot of information thrown at you. A lot of, mostly about this build, but I was just in I was just in the zone. I had to get this done. I was just so excited to finish this and mainly be done with it. I built this like I said in, I think, the last episode, roughly 15 or more times. <laughs> and I was just excited to be done with it. We've reached the end of the video. Be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and follow me on Twitter. Check me out on Twitch. And if you are really into my channel, really like what I'm doing here, you can support me uh, on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. I've talked about this before. Uh, about how you can get great rewards. I haven't actually said what any of the rewards are. Uh, you can, for one dollar, you will get your name on, uh, immortalized in a, something I'm calling a grand adventure map, which is picture you just went to the Walmarts or the Target or wherever it is that you buy your video games and you picked up the brand new Legend of Zelda game, right? And you're going to go through, you're going to get your sword, you're going to conquer dozens of temples and save the princess that's my grand adventure map it is a map that i am working on uh take me about a year to finish and it's filled with dozens of well dozens about a dozen a singular dozen 12 12 temples that you can go through and complete it's an adventure map you get to uh you'll be in adventure mode so you can't break blocks so you have to interact with everything normally uh, there are special uh, command modded items. I don't want to say the word mod because it's not technically a mod. Uh, using commands, I've created. We have special items for you, special gear that you can acquire only in these uh, these temples. So you have to go through, earn your gear. Some of this gear will allow you access to get to the other temples, so you can't do anything out of order. It's truly really grand. It's really neat and you will get your name in that map. Now, to get that map, uh, you have to be a patron, and uh, it is a reward under one of the tiers. However, if you don't want to wait a year for that, I have a lower tier. Uh, I believe it's $5 a month. Uh, you'll have access to all of my monthly, uh, I call them standalone adventure maps. Same concept, just one temple. So. Uh, as those come out, you'll get free downloads of that uh, 
to basically play an adventure map of my design. Uh, those won't be on film or anything, so they'll be completely fresh and brand new for you. You'll have no idea what's going on in there. And basically, just think of Zelda. Think Zelda. That's what you'll be getting. You'll be downloading a free one-time temple Zelda map uh, in that style. Uh, those will be coming out m much more regularly. And in Resilient 2, I'll be working on uh, the Grand Adventure map. So you can see the progress for that. It's going to be really exciting. Anyway, I've been talking for a very long time. Links are down in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.